Hey, welcome to The Roll Steady. This is the Urban Pump Series. Today we're kicking off part two of the series, which is about optimizing water. You know, in part one, we talked about getting water, so from the hydrant up to our, up to our engines, to up, the, up to the apparatus. Um, all of those clips, if you'd like, can be viewed over on YouTube. You can check out the individual clips. Uh, you can check out the Urban Pump Series playlist where we've got them all organized. Um, but if you're wanting a little bit more context, a little bit more content uh, that goes along with those individual clips, you can check us out over on the Roll Study Network. Um, you can do that one of two ways. You can go to therollsteady.com, which is just kind of the web interface for the app or the platform that we're using, which is the second way. You can download the individual app, the Mighty Networks app um, from your app store. Android, Apple, it's, it's available on both. Um, and you can, you can get more content by searching for our network or our community on there. Just put in the Roll Study or Roll Study. You should be able to find us right away. And over there, we've got written content. We've got extra audio, video um, that goes along with those individual videos that you might be seeing over on YouTube. So um, this month specifically, when we kick off this series or this part of the series, we're gonna be looking at um, what it means to pump in series or, or pressure, what it means to pump in, in, in parallel or volume. Let's roll up. talking about pumping in pressure series, uh, which is one of two different modes that we can pump in when we're talking about dual stage pumps or multi-stage pumps, right? Um, we can pump in pressure series, we can pump in volume or what's called parallel. And I think it's important to include the terms, uh, you know, specifically this term series, because it helps us with this, this kind of visual map or, or this understanding or being able to picture in our heads what, you know, how water is moving through our pump specifically the two impellers inside a dual stage pump in order to achieve the goal of pressure, okay? Because that's our goal. When we're, when we're, when we're pumping in pressure, we're, we're trying to maximize pressure, okay? When we're pumping in volume that we'll talk about in the next video, we're talking about trying to maximize our volume capacity, right? So, you know, this whole concept of series is, is, is an important term because I think it helps us understand and, and, and visually map this out in our, in our minds or even here on the board. So when we're talking about, you know, dual stage pumps, right? We've got, we've got two different impellers. Impeller number one and impeller number two. And when we're talking about running in pressure or, or pumping in pressure or series, it's important to understand that, that we've put these impellers, you know, uh, you know, physically the, the pump never changes, okay? But like for the sake of this illustration, we're stacking or we're running them in a series one after the next, right? So that one directly feeds the other. So the way I, I, I typically try to say this is, is when we're pumping in pressure or series, we've, we've stacked our impellers. You know, it's important to understand too that, that both of these impellers, okay, are, are physically the same size typically, okay? So impeller one is gonna be the same size as impeller two, which means the volume capacity is gonna be equal to the other one, right? So when we start talking about, you know, throttling up, you know, impeller one might be able to generate 500 gallons a minute at 100 pounds of pressure, okay? Impeller two is gonna be able to do the same exact thing. It's 500 gallons per minute, okay? Because they're physically the same size, okay? Now, the other piece that we have to understand is that both of these are running off the same drive shaft. So, you know, impeller one is gonna be spinning at the same RPMs that impeller number two is, which is the second half of that piece that we were just talking about. Impeller one might be able to generate 500 gallons per minute at 100 PSI, right? So that that, that impeller is, is imparting velocity, which is being captured as pressure in the system. Okay, well, impeller two is able to do the exact same thing, 500 gallons a minute, and it's able to impart 100 pounds of pressure, okay, or, or yeah, 100 pounds of pressure onto the, the water that is incoming to it, okay? So, so let's use those numbers, just these are completely fictitious numbers, we're just using these for the sake of simplicity here. But we're gonna say, you know, once we throttle up, we get that, that throttle set, we're able to generate through impeller one, 500 GPMs. Okay, and we're gonna say that we're able to do that at 100 PSI. Okay, impeller two is gonna be the exact same thing, right? It's able to produce 500 gallons per minute at 100 PSI. So it's able to impart 100 pounds of pressure onto whatever's incoming. Same thing impeller one's able to do, impeller two is able to do. So again, you know, let's say we've got our, our water supply that's coming in, right? So whether it's tank water or we've got a permanent water supply that's coming in, okay, water is going to enter impeller one, right? And when they're in series, when they're stacked, when we're in pressure mode, impeller one is gonna discharge directly to impeller number two, which is then gonna discharge to our discharge manifold, okay? And it's gonna go out one of the discharges that we have, depending on what line we're trying to flow. 
Okay, the key here to understand is that, again, these impellers are the same size, right? Their capacity is going to be equal to the other. So our volume right here is not changing. That 500 gallons per minute that, that, this, is, that this is spitting out, impeller one is spitting out, is gonna come into impeller two. Well, impeller two can only hold 500 gallons just like impeller one was able to at this RPM, okay? So that's gonna pass through. So the 500 gallons per minute is gonna come through and we're gonna see 500 gallons per minute on our discharge side, right? But where our focus is when we're trying to maximize pressure is right here. Because impeller one we said is able to spit out 500 gallons per minute and it's able to impart 100 pounds of pressure, okay, as it spins that water, that, that pressure is being generated, okay, so it's gonna impart 100 pounds of pressure. Impeller number two is gonna be able to do the same thing. So that 100 pounds that comes out is gonna go into impeller number two and it's going to add the other 100 pounds of pressure that it's able to spit out. And so now what we see on our discharge side, okay, is 500 gallons a minute because our, our volume hasn't changed, okay? Those are, those are physically unable to hold more water at that, that, that RPM, that, that amount of throttle that's being, uh, being turned, okay? What is able to change though is the water coming in was at a higher pressure and so now it's imparted 100 more pounds of pressure to, to impeller one's discharge pressure. So we see 500 gallons per minute at 200 PSI. So that's how we're maximizing our pressure right here when we start to stack these impellers, okay? When we understand this, we start to really like, like things like relay pumping, inline pumping, where we're setting multiple engines up, okay? And we're pumping from one engine and we're boosting pressure to the next engine, to the next engine, to whatever we're trying to discharge to, whether it's a, you know, uh, you know a fire that's 3,000 you know, feet from, from the hydrant or we're pumping to the top story of an 80th floor on a high rise, okay? Um, the concept is the same. It's just with, in this, when we're talking about pumping in pressure or series, we're talking about in the confines of, of that individual pump, right? We've got these two impellers that have now been stacked. So hey, if you're viewing this over on YouTube, just a reminder, if you're looking for more context, more content on this specific topic, you can you can check out, you know, the full episode over on the Roll Study Network. Uh, you can go to the rollsteady.com or you can download the Mighty Networks app and search for the Roll Study on there. You should find the community that way. Uh, over there, you're going to find the full episode for this, this content that we're building out on this topic. So again, thanks to everybody that's supporting this channel, uh, this, this network, this community. Uh, continue to hold fast, continue to raise the bar.